those remarks as president left uh, mass this evening. More than 3.8 million Ukrainian refugees have fled their country since Russia's invasion began 33 days ago. The nonprofit organization Ukraine Now is working to, quote, help Ukrainians and other nations deal with the humanitarian crisis and consequences of a brutal invasion by the Russian Federation. Joining us now is the group's founder, Artur Kulian. Artur, uh, you are a, uh, an entrepreneur, a computer expert. When did you set up Ukraine Now and, and why? Thanks, John, for having me here. Really, really appreciate it. I started it the first day of the invasion. Uh, when I heard the news, I couldn't believe it. Uh, but then my family called me crying because they woke up because of bombs. And I just knew that I had to help some somehow. I felt hopeless, helpless. But I'm an entrepreneur, so I, I'm used to problem solving. So I created a website, created a domain, created a forum to help Ukraine and start posting on social media. So how does it work? This is a crowdsourcing platform, correct? Correct. And we match the needs and supply of people that are willing to help Ukraine and Ukrainians. Okay, so let's say um, uh, somebody is in Ukraine and wants to get out. They can reach out to you. And, and how do you then try and help them? So on our website, on ukrainenow.org, you go to a website form and you fill out information. Where do you need to go from point A to point B? What are the details? How many people in a party? Do you have kids? Do you need special assistance if you're disabled? And then we match you with a pool of drivers, buses that we procure and buy, and we help people using this crowdsourced manner. I'm sure that the Russians are not very happy with what you're doing. The Russians are also expert at uh, cyber attacks. Have you experienced any of that? Of course. It started from the very first week, and we've been fortunate to have American cybersecurity people, cybersecurity firms jumping on board and helping us, volunteering and basically protecting us from all kinds of attacks, not just cybersecurity, but also psychological warfare. Where do you get the drivers? You said you have drivers who are, uh, you know, available in Ukraine, buses and that sort of thing. Where does that pool of transportation come from? It's regular civilians. It's regular people that are willing to help. Uh, when we're procuring buses, we're hiring people from uh, from Poland and other countries to come as transportation companies uh, driving those buses into Ukraine. There's at least one poll that shows public support uh, for helping Ukrainians is actually dropping right now. How do you respond to that? Look, John, uh, there is short-term and long-term needs, and I think we've almost exhausted the short-term help of people like me and you that are just jumping off the couch when they hear the news and, and donate and help how they can. But long-term, I think this is an inflection point when the big companies, organizations, nonprofits, philanthropists are really jumping on board, getting through the hurdles of the bureaucracy and figuring out how to help in the long-term in a more sustainable way. Way. So the website is ukrainenow.org. Do I have that right? Correct. And that's where people can uh, can visit if they want to learn more or learn how to help they out. Can, they can donate. They can join as volunteer. And, you know, people always ask me, should I take PTO and just rush to Poland and drop everything and help however I can. And I always say, no, please use your professional skills because you would be surprised how many of the needs Ukrainian nonprofits, people on the ground need. You may be surprised, but, you know, accountants, video editors, social media managers, everyone is needed. So I always tell people, use your professional skills. That's the best way to, to help this, um, you know, crisis, the humanitarian crisis and the war in general. General. And however little you're going to help, you're going to be a part of this story, this journey, and it's going to take decades to rebuild Ukraine, and yeah. we'll get, we're going to reach out. That is obvious. Artur Kyulian, the founder of UkraineNow.org, thank you. Thank you.